I have a question from Kyle. Uh, previously, I read an article, can't find any more on the internet. I, uh, you wrote about one-arm lifts, specifically heavy-ish one-arm dumbbell snatches and clean and jerks in the plus eight, minus eight range. Uh, I also know that you have said you do not see any value in snatching kettlebells heavier than 24 kilos. Um, I think if you're preparing for a cert, uh, one of the things we do is we do a, a fair number of reps in a workout, uh, a classic. I'm just saying, Kyle, I, 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 what you said is true-ish, but not completely. Like you would take the 24. I think the workout goes 20. Uh, when I when I'm go I'm gonna go like this with my thumbs. So I'm gonna go. That means left and right. 20 left, 20 right, 20 left, 20 right, 15 left, 15 right, 15 left, 15 right, 10 left, 10 right, 10 left, 10 right, and then you go up and wait for five left, five right, five left, five right, to train yourself to under a level of fatigue use a heavier weight so that when you get to those last few seconds in the snatch test, you have, you know, have some reserves from your training. Uh, years ago, I tried real hard to get the, and this is, and by the way, you'll notice that you, and you used it correctly. I'm talking about dumbbell snatches and dumbbell clean and jerks there, because I do think with dumbbells, um, and you do have a different technique. It's a bit more of a dead hang. Uh, we were trying to figure out a way to use heavy dumbbells in this transformation program that it's such a big fan of. So Kyle, that might be where the confusion shows up. So the transformation program, I'm going to tell it to you, and it's going to sound so easy on, when I say it, but uh, one day a week, day one, it'd be either military or bench press, three sets of eight with a real tight one minute rest uh, on those sets, and you gauge the weight on the last set of eight. Uh, follow that with uh, power curls uh, or cheek curls, depending on what technique you want to use. And again, that's three sets of eight with a strict one minute rest and you measure the load by the last set of eight. Uh, strangely, you can use some big weights on the power curl. Um, and I got to tell you, three sets of eight with 225, you know, your, your pythons pop after that. Okay, you rest the next day. Oh, and you do whatever ab workout you want. Any core ab workout after that. Whatever you want to do is fine. Uh, the middle workout of the week is front squats, three sets of eight with a minute rest. Really hard. And overhead squats, three sets of eight, one minute rest. And that, that, that lower body day is a hard day, no matter how you work it out. Day three, I liked. Uh, we did wide grip. They're called whip snatches. But, you know, some other people, we call them whip snatches, but it's also known as a high, high hang. Basically, where you, you, you barely slide the weight down your thigh at all and just jump the weight up. Again, three sets of eight uh, minute rest, judge the weight on the last uh, set. And then a very interesting exercise was very popular uh, 30, 40 years ago in the throwing arts, um, the clean grip snatch. Um, you stand tall, you slide the weight down, to your knees, maybe just below your knees, and snatch it up. And that was three sets of eight with a minute rest. And that was the exercise we were looking to try to replace. Uh, we experimented, and this is a while ago, but I experimented this before kettlebells showed up and we were using dumbbell snatches because the dumbbell snatch, so if we did a set of eight with the left side, a set of eight with the right side, and then try to get six sets of eight. So left, right is two sets, left, right, four sets, left, right, six sets. We thought that might work. When the kettlebell came around and uh, we started using it, I thought there was real value to it. Uh, it just, it's it ended up being almost the snatch test every Friday because once we got that to work, the six, six, six sets of eight, we then experimented with 12 sets of eight. Now you're, you know, you're looking at a lot of volume here. Uh, obviously that one minute rest thing had to be, uh, you know, so a set of six with tight rest periods, rest, a full rest, another set of six sets of eight. And then of course the workout would be finished. I, I always liked it. I thought there was value to it. I shared it with other people. I got some feedback that it was just way too hard. And, uh, 
For my throwers, we kept it with the barbells only. We did uh, play around with some of the athletes I had in the, in the aughts. So that have been 2005, six, seven, and eight, and maybe even nine, uh, where we did the snatch because you know I was able to teach them how to kettlebell snatch. Um, not no, there was nothing uh, perfect or wrong. It was just a, a good option. Um, and then you, the the next thing you say is this: not looking for an either or, but wondering if you could riff on this a bit. And I kind of think I just did. Has your opinion thoughts changed since you wrote this article? Well, I think my opinion and thoughts always change. Uh, at least, you know, wouldn't y'all hope that? I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, I, I hope I'm constantly, um, you know, evolving, learning more. Uh, when I look back at this program, it's called the Transformation Program. Uh, I, I love it. You can find it there at danjohnuniversity.com. And, and you can just do it as a, you know, follow it exactly. I originally made it for my, my uh, discus throwers who are American football players. And the idea was after that season was over, we would do that three three times in a row. They're, they're basically in two week periods of transformation is two weeks. Um, uh, real simple, I'll explain that to you. Week one, you military press first, then power curl. Week two, you power curl, then military. And you try to get a sense of things. You do three rounds of those two weeks, six weeks. And I always felt that that was a good program to get the athletes to transform from American football players to throwers. Um, it wasn't crazy hard, but it was hard. Uh, interesting thing about it, and I can think all the way back to the early 90s with my athletes, uh, we would actually use that. We, it was pretty cool. I mean, the, the athletes would show up at three. That workout takes about 15 minutes, and then we go do drills. And we were able to get a ton of work in in an hour every day. And sometimes when you're, you're, the schools I've always taught at were always fairly highly academic schools. So the athletes could give me, they could give me as much time as I wanted. But if I could certain times a year focus on one hour a day, things were better. Does the kettlebell snatch uh, in this example on that day three, uh, when you're starting to slide up into those really high reps, does that, you know, you know, I, I don't want you dangling on the edge of your nervous system you know, with the exhaustion of all the throwing and all the other lifting and the academics and just the realities of, of you know, living. I didn't want that to burn you up. So I still think there's great value in it. Uh, I think as a, an experiment, I would, uh, I wouldn't go, <laughs> none of you should say, oh, that darn it, I'm going to do eight, eight, rest a minute, eight, eight, rest a minute, eight, eight, rest a minute. And I'm going to do that twice as your first day at this, I would take a little time building up to it, especially if you're using that 24, 28, or 32, yeah. Kyle then follows up with, I do not have an Olympic lifting background, but have been playing around with some light barbell power snatches. Due to previous injuries, I am not sure that working up to any appreciable weight is possible, worth the risk. Great, that's that risk reward, cost of benefit. I'm so glad you mentioned that. I have played around a bit with a dumbbell snatch and it feels good. Pulling the dumbbell from a dead stop feels more like a barbell snatch. And for whatever reason, that just feels better than the kettlebell snatch. Any thoughts you have are appreciated. Uh, and then broadly speaking, as a 38 year old male, non-competitive athlete looking for general strength and hypertrophy, how important is the snatch movement? And now let's answer that question that's been sitting in the back of my head the whole time. It was interesting that you say this on a morning where I had so many people show up for the morning session. Uh, we had a number of personal trainers this morning and the question came up during our uh, original strength segment, how many of the personal trainers teach the kettlebell snatch? And the answer was nobody never. Uh, most of the people who were there this morning are RKC, so kettlebell certified. But for most clients, there's not a lot of value to it. I think the kettlebell snatch is an amazing, it's an amazing exercise. It really is. And done correctly, I think it really can do some uh, great things for the whole system. Uh, it is very exhausting, uh, as anyone's ever done the snatch test or the real, the secret service one, which is the real tough one. Go grab those 24 folks 
and do 200 reps in the snatch for me in 10 minutes and get back to me when you catch your breath. It's tough. Um, it's really tough. Uh, hats off to Coach Barbiero, who was there with me when we did this, uh, and that was a laugh fest. So I would say the kettlebell snatch is, is a great exercise. Uh, it was the answer to all questions maybe 15, 16 years ago. And since then, it's kind of cooled off a bit. And, and you know, you just, you just notice that online. Is there a hypertrophy component to, to it? Well, the benefits you can get hypertrophy-wise, you'll probably just get a little easier by doing swings and maybe waiter walks. By the way, everything I say, you can, you can just come in and say, but, 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 but to it. And I agree with that. Um, for pure hypertrophy, there are much better choices. I do like your insight, though that the dumbbell snatch is better done dead stopped and the kettlebell is swinging to a snatch. And that actually defines the difference between, in my world anyway, a dumbbell family exercise and a kettlebell exercise. Uh, does Is it good for hypertrophy? I'm gonna say no, but then, you know, someone's gonna you know, write in the comments, I started doing kettlebell snatches and I became Mr. Olympia or whatever, you know, Mr. Universe. Uh, I, I think there's great value to it. I think it really is an interesting exercise. If you just want to finish your, I mean, you just want to get toasted and roasted, the kettlebell snatch is a good option. I mean, you know, just like that one workout we have preparing for the certs where you do a set of 100 kettlebell snatches, you rest, you do another set of 100, you rest, and then you finish with a third set of 100. I mean, when people finish that, interesting, you would think people would be hungry after that. But very often, the last thing they want to do is eat because uh, that, that just beats you down. It, it does sour your stomach quite a bit. But there's something special about the kettlebell snatch with high reps. Uh, can it be used in hypertrophy programs? I say generally no, but there's a lot of people who disagree with me. And I'm fine with that. But most people I know, I, I, the kettlebell snatch um, is like a lot of the it lifts in the kettlebell world and the barbell world, uh, they have value, they're worth learning, but after that, you have to make a, a good decision whether or not you want to keep using them or not, okay? Thank you.